students who can look into this, they can see that this red trace is going by and passing through a class and uh, getting out from uh, uh, to uh, air side. So what you can see is uh, that uh, light is uh, getting uh, what reflected or reflected? That is reflected. So, but when you see that when I change the angle from red, so I'm changing the angle in a way that I, I have achieved the angle, so blue line in a way that the light is not get reflected, it is get reflected back. So this is called a TIR, total internal ref, uh, 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 reflection. So I guess you are aware of this TIR. And now why I'm talking about TIR, it becomes because I am talking about SPR. So uh, in SPR, what we do is uh, you, uh, just a uh, uh, illustrative example. I, I will talk more on this. Uh, just you, what you can see is that there is a glass plate and there is one prism. Uh, there is one prism over it, and in yellow you can see a gold plate. Okay, so there is a gold plate, there is a glass plate, and then there is a prism. And on on the gold plate you can see some Y shape. Uh, uh, this ligand which are immobilized on this which are attached to gold surface so Y shape such as antibody and when you can see this blue dots which are analytes uh, which are flowing over this uh, uh, ligand and so the other segment is you can see a light source a red light is coming so instead of getting reflected it is getting reflected back so if you see there are two uh, so in one case when you see that so this uh, this uh, incident light got a minima so intensity minima is here so why this minima you get so why this minima you get in SPR and that this is the whole thing this is a basic principle uh, which is there so surface plasma resonance so first what kind of surface I am talking about? So surface I am talking to, um, the surface that I am talking about is a gold surface. It is not gold surface. So, so the, why we are taking this kind of gold surface? So we can take other surfaces such as indium. We can take copper. We can take uh, nitrogen or uh, this uh, um, sodium. Uh, but there are limitations with those surfaces. So the surface that we choose for SPR is, the, is those surfaces which have free electrons or the electrons which are available for conduction. Okay, so, and the plasmon, plasmon is the particle name of, uh, of the free electrons which are, uh, uh, which are oscillating and that the resonance or uh, the, the, the waves of, of free uh, electrons and the resonance occurs when when the resonance occurs is listen it listen the line carefully when the light the light is made up of what light has photons photons has energy so at a certain angle when i when i have achieved the tir and near to that angle when the energy of photons so when because when this light comes it get reflected back and you were getting an intensity minima so that means some some energy was lost during when, when the light was reflected back so what is this energy uh, intensity loss is that the photons were uh, the energy of photons was coupled with the free electrons of gold and this coupling led to the resonance of those uh, free electrons and that led to change of this uh, reflected uh, light with different minima so you can see that there are two uh, uh, waves so first wave and second wave so first wave is a wave when there was uh, so i will explain you everything but uh, so, so let's suppose i added something i added these blue balls so first wave uh, is when there is no blue ball so this is the first wave when when I added these blue walls, the second wave is this. So when when I added this blue wall, this lead to change in the angle. The, uh, there is an angular shift of this uh, intensity minima. So 
I will talk. I will explain you everything. We are just. I am making you uh, uh, comfortable with this technique. So to to uh, summarize this, uh, in SPR we uh, we have a glass prism. The glass prism uh, that uh, then we have a glass uh, plate over which we are coating a gold plate. A go we are taking gold plate because the surface uh, has free electrons, conducting electrons. And on gold surface, uh, we are immobilizing, uh, uh, suppose antibody, and then a blue ball is your antigen. You want to see that your antigen interacts with your antibody. So let's suppose blue ball is your antigen, and your this Y shape is your antibody. So when the light source passes without this antigen, it will have some angular. Uh, it will have some uh, intensity minima, and then if This blue ball or uh, antigen interacts with this uh, Y-shaped antibody. You just see an angular shift. With so this angular shift, you measure this angular shift. This change in angular shift is measured in terms of response unit. Let's now come to the graph. So change in this angular shift is recorded in terms of response unit. So this is baseline. Now you can see there is one term called association. Are you able to see this association? So, what is this association? Initially, when there was no blue ball, when there was no blue ball, you will you will get the baseline. But when this blue ball starts getting interacting with this white shape antibody, what you will see that there is an increase in the graph. So that blue is interacting with white uh, shape uh, antibody. So you what you are getting an association. Okay. So this association, why there is an increase in this? Because there is uh, uh, increase in response unit, and this response unit is proportional to the amount of angular shift. So amount of angular shift in this uh, before and after the binding of the blue ball to the Y-shaped structure gives you R U, and this R U will be that much. Uh, 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 and it is proportional to the angular shift. So once the association is done, so let's suppose uh, there are four Y-shape uh, uh, antibody. You can see in this. So maximum eight or uh, four to eight antigen can bind to it. So once the maximum is reached, it will turn. It will reach to equilibrium. So what is equilibrium? Equilibrium is a place. Where equal number of particles are binding or blue balls are binding, and equal numbers are dissociating. So equilibrium is something which has graph forward, jitna uh, 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 jitna forward, utna reverse. So equilibrium is something which is uh, k on and k off is equal. And then there is a phase called dissociation that I am removing every ball, and then what you will see that. That the that there is a dip in the resonance unit because the angular change is there. Now we will uh, we will regenerate the surface. What does regeneration means? That any blue ball which uh, which was not dissociated at the time of dissociation, we will add uh, some buffer so that this complete dissociation occurs and no blue ball is still binding there. So this is called regeneration, and again you will get the baseline. So I guess uh, let me uh, let me summarize this again. That what I am trying to tell you that first thing, the surface plasma resonance is based on change in refractive index. Is it is based on change in refractive index? Okay. So the light which was coming initially before uh, any blue ball binds to this Y, so you were getting one uh, angle and. Uh, When this blue ball binds to this Y-shaped structure antibody, you are getting angular shift. So there were two uh, graphs here. So the amount of shift depends upon the amount of antigen by or blue ball binding to your Y-shaped antibody. So because when anything binds here, it will lead to change in refractive index. A change in refractive index will lead to change in SPR angle, which is angular shift. So, higher the mass, higher the change in refractive index, higher the change in angular shift, higher higher you get a resonance unit. So, I I repeat it again. 
So when there was no ball, the refractive index was same, so you get a baseline. So when this blue ball binds to this Y-shaped structure, a refractive index changes. Change in refractive index will depend upon what number of mass or the number of molecules which are coming here and binding to this Y-shaped structure. So this change in refractive index is proportional to change in angular shift. And this change in angular shift is proportional to the increase in RU. And this RU is something that we know. So I guess uh, I was able to make it clear. I will make it more clear in next slide. So what happens that when this light, when this light, uh, so let's suppose, uh, so let this this yellow is a gold plate. So when this light passes uh, 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 is through this glass prism, it gets reflected back. So what I told you that during this process, what happens that that the photons are carrying energy. So some of the energy get coupled with the free electrons of gold surface and this coupling leads to resonance of these plasmons and they send a wave called ev evanescent waves. So I, I hope this wave is, uh, word is uh, uh, visible, evanescent wave. Evanescent waves are the waves which are the decaying waves. So they, they travel at the both side. They travel, uh, so, they, so if the waves are created here, so they will travel in this direction as well as in this direction, both in uh, Y positive and Y negative. Now these evanescent waves are very sensitive to change in refractive index. So that was I was telling you that because the evanescent waves are traveling here and they are not visible, but we, uh, and they are sensitive to refractive index change in refractive index. So when this blue ball uh, binds to this Y shaped structure, refractive index will change and this will lead to the change in this uh, 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 angle of uh, 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 re resonance angle. And that's what we get a shift in angular uh, uh, angle shift, and that's what we record. So A is A is a wave before ball was binding, and B is a change when ball binds. So a difference between A and B is there a change in angle. So uh, now you can read it. The the semantic experiment setup. Surface plasma uh, resonance, a sensor chip with the gold coating. So this is your prism, and this is yellow part is your gold coating, and this is your light source. So a polarized light. So very important, the light source is monochromatic, and it is polarized, plain polarized. So the reflected light intensity is measured in detector. A certain angle of incidence, which is this angle excitation of surface plasma occurs, resulting in dip of intensity. So this dip was there because uh, some energy was transferred from photons to, to, to the free electrons of the surface. That's why there was a dip in the intensity of the reflected light. Now the intensity, a change in the reflective index at the surface of the gold film at this surface, so I'm talking about this surface or this surface. So change at this surface will cause an angle shift from A to B. So I guess I am uh, able to make it clear that a change from A to B, why it happens because if there is change in refractive index and uh, that's why it happens. And refractive index is linear to amount of substance which is binding. So this, this is very important. So this diagram will make this clear. So this is light passing on, and this is metal film, and this is a detector, and this, which is detecting a reflected light. So in first case where this is the dark, this is the dark portion, this is the dark position, original dark position. But when this molecules binds to, so let's, so this is ligand, and this is the biomolecule which binds. So before binding of the biomolecule, this was the dark line. But when this biomolecule bound to this ligand, you can see that this dark line, this dark line shifted towards your right. So this is called angular shift. So at certain incident angle or resonance angle, the plasmas are set to resonate with light. Okay. But if the reflective index changes, then the resonance angle will change. So the resulting in the absorption of light at that angle. This creates a dark line in the reflected beam shown in figure 2. So this is how a simplistic diagram this looks. So this is the light source which is getting reflected back because the here we have what? A gold surface. Gold surface has free electrons which can take up the light energy and this light energy can uh, coupled up with this uh, free electrons of gold surface and then they send evanescent waves at both the side 
and these agreeing days are uh, sensitive to change in refractive index so amount of analyte binds to ligand will be proportional to change in the angular shift so this is a chip so chip has a glass plate so this is a chip that we fit into spr machine so chip looks like this this is a gold plate of some small gold plate square like structure so we have we have a glass when we have a gold layer and over we have a dextrin matrix we coat the gold with dextrin matrix is just because the dextrin provides a amphiphatic environment and it can help in uh, binding of uh, biological or biomolecules it's just for binding for absorption of those uh, uh, biomolecules that we want to test so what all type of experiment i can do in spr so let's suppose my protein so let's suppose this is my protein which has histidine tag so it's so sorry so this is um, so uh, this is uh, my uh, ligand or uh, which uh, which is protein Let, let's suppose protein x so let's make an make an experiment i want to check that it will be easy uh, uh, okay so this will be so i want to i, I let's i make a imaginary example that i want to see that whether my protein x interact with protein y okay so i want to check interaction of protein x with protein y so what i am doing that i am immobilizing a ligand which is protein x on cold surface and then i will flow the protein y over this so if protein y interacts with uh, ligand it will lead to change in angular shift so first for this i am what i am immobilizing my ligand which is having a histidine tag we know that we purify the protein with histidine tag and with the help of nickel nt chip we immobilized uh, we we were able to immobilize our ligand on this now what will happen so let's suppose in this diagram my ligand which is protein x is immobilized on this gold surface now when this protein y which is red color binds to this uh, surface what will happen that association will occur and association will occur to some maximum where all the vacate all the positions which were there they they got occupied and equilibrium is reached now i gave a dissociation and then i re again regenerate the surface so this these are the basic steps that i will repeat again and again in spr so through association and through dissociation you can find very important term which is called kinetics so how fast so when i say kinetics i take time into consideration i take time into consideration how fast my protein y interacts with protein x and how fast or slow it dissociates so let's suppose i i discover to my informatics i discover i discovered a, a drug number of drug against protein x so what i will do first i will immobilize the protein x on gold surface then one by one i will flow my drug 1 drug 2 drug 3 over the surface and i will check the kinetics that which drug was able to bind with high uh, uh, rate of kinetics because uh, in terms when when we are discovering drug it is very important for a drug to uh, have a good dynamicity because if uh, we we cannot afford a drug which goes and binds to the uh, to the molecule forever we we want a reversible reaction and we want a uh, fast di dynamics in this uh, in the biological system dynamics is very important just imagine the example so we can read the kinetics like what is the k on means that what is the association rate rate means that how many molecules are binding to my uh, ligand in per unit time and how many molecules are dissociating per unit time so this is the kinetics and then a important thing which is equilibrium this equilibrium where we have equal k on and k off is help us to find what binding affinity so three main parameters you are getting first association rate second dissociation rate and third is the affinity actually how much is the affinity in molar it is in molar range it is in micromolar range or it is in nanomolar range so biological molecules which have high affinity they fall in nanomolar range and the drugs 
uh, they fall from nanomolar to micromolar range if they have a good affinity. If, and sometimes if they can go to millimolar, but they are not good. So, uh, so nanomolar binding type of affinity you can quantitate through SPR. So, what we do actually is you can see that. What association is that when A plus B gives AB, that means your ligand and then like binds it gives AB. So the reaction rate of AB you can find, and dissociation is when AB, which is formed, it is dissociated. AB dissociated to A plus B. And uh, the, the second parameter that I told you was equilibrium, uh, equilibrium association constant or equilibrium dissociation constant. It means the affinity constant is that with Ka divided by Kd. So number of, uh, so uh, in this, uh, it, it's just a reverse of this. So Ka divided by Kd gives you K capital A. Now many students make some mistake. This is K capital A, and this association rate was K small a. Here we, when I talk about equilibrium association constant, so I am talking about this region where Ka and Kd. I am talking about when they were in equal range, uh, the the rates was the same. So this is the thing Ka divided by Kd or K, D, K capital D, uh, the affinity constant of the dissociation equilibrium constant is K small d divided by K A, uh, K small a. So remember these uh, sub, uh, small or capital letters. They makes lot of difference because one is binding affinity gives you in mole, and other is in uh, time second uh, per second. So kinetics and affinity you can find. So the basic principle is that the SPR signal. Originates from the changes in the refractive index at the surface of the gold sensor chip. The increase in the mass associated with the binding event causes a proportional increase in the refractive index, which is observed as change in response that I told you. These changes are measured as change in resonance angle R of refractive light or uh, when the analyte flowing in a microfluidic channel binds to the immobilized ligand and increases the density on the sensor chip. So. Importantly, for protein-protein interaction, the change in refractive index on the surface is linearly related to number of molecules binding. So that's why we can calculate how many number of molecules got binded. So stoichiometry we can also calculate from SPR or stoichiometry. So first is kinetics, second is affinity, and third is stoichiometry. So this is the real-time SPR uh, 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 graph uh, that, and it is from my work. That so let's suppose um, I uh, I take example that I immobilize 50. So in a, in a in a room there are 50 uh, chairs. Okay. So this black trace. So this black trace. Let's suppose this first black trace. And first concentration, I allowed only five. Uh, students to come in class. So what will happen? Because seats were abundant, so ligand was 50, and analyte which came, they were only five. So they will bind, they will bind, and they will reach the equilibrium, and then they will dissociate. In second concentration, what I will do? I allow 10 students, so they will bind, they will sit in the uh, uh, ch on chairs, and then they can leave. Similarly, I I increase the number of students till the time. When seats were 50, and I allowed 50 students, so what will happen that the response will reach to the maximum. So association as the number of molecules which are bound, which they, they will increase in the resonance unit to the maximum, and they will reach to a saturation, and then they will dissociate. So if I allow more students, so what will happen that only 50 can bind, not and other 10, uh, other 10 will not bind. So what you can see that the these you can see the overlapping. So this uh, magenta and blue they are overlapping. Even I am increasing the concentration from hundred thousand nanobol to eighteen hundred nanobol. They are not increasing. This means that the seats were full. The seats are full. The binding is full. And then you can plot this. So this is the maxima. Black is the maxima here. Of this, red is the maxima of here. Green is the maxima of here. And I get a plot. And through this plot, I can find the KD, K capital D, which is affinity. And I, I, I got 625 nanomole because it is 10 to the power minus 9 moles and 203 nanomole. So what is the difference is that this molecule, so this uh, binding, uh, so in this case, I, I immobilize the prime protein, I immobilize the prime protein on the gold plate, and I use two DNA molecule, A and uh, C. 
So you can see that A is binding with 625 nanomole and C is binding with 203 nanomoles. C has more affinity to uh, my prion protein. And you can see that there is a difference in association and dissociation also. So in this way, you can calculate the kinetics, you can calculate the KD, and this binding was at 1 is to 1 ratio. So 1 is to 1 was the stoichiometry that I found. So this is a real time example that uh, I, I I used to uh, make it to make you more connected to the real time experiment.